Uh, hey everyone. Uh, so I wanted to uh, go through some of the crypto Twitter that Trustor follows. And then almost immediately I've come across this tweet that I wanted to share with you. And uh, most importantly, the reaction of uh, Pompliano, the pomp to it. It's, I think it's uh, remarkable. And uh, let me just go ahead and play, uh, play it because maybe you guys can comment on it. Uh, this is a tweet right here. It's a mock, it's a fake account. Uh, by Michael Saylor, and this one really caught my attention. It's like, uh, hey, uh, uh, Pomp, why'd you remove Bitcoin from your bio, uh, Bitcoin symbol from your bio? And apparently it's kind of a explosive issue because uh, uh, Pomp actually um, responded to that, uh, sending the guy uh, to his substack where he's got this uh, sort of uh, audio response it looks like it's been running for a few months now. People have been asking Pompiano, why has he uh, removed laser eyes? Why has he uh, removed uh, the Bitcoin symbol from his uh, uh, Twitter profile? And I actually gave it a listen. And I got to tell you, I want to share it with you. And I want to listen to it together with you guys and maybe comment on it. Because, uh, I mean, there's some vivid thoughts in there. So let's uh, um, let's give it a listen. I'm going I'm to put it up right from the beginning. Okay, there seems to be a lot of conversation around my Twitter profile over the last day or two. It started with a viral tweet where somebody tweeted and said, laser eyes gone. Bitcoin and Biogon. Pretty soon, they'll be tweeting about dividend stocks. And they included a link. Uh, it's actually uh, underneath there. Um, it's pretty easy to find. I'm not going to post any links to that. But underneath there is a transcript of the whole conversation, uh, illustrated with all the tweets and all the uh, screenshots that he's uh, commenting on in his uh, uh, audio letter. So I just wanted to put it up there. And there are more tweets from other individuals in the crypto community. I even got phone calls and text messages from people I have great respect for. They wanted to know. Did I change my mind on Bitcoin? The truth is that I haven't changed my mind. Not only do I still have deep conviction in Bitcoin and its future potential, but I've been buying more Bitcoin, both personally and professionally. So buying Bitcoin both personally and professionally. Um, I'm not sure what that means. If you guys can comment on that, that'd be great. I'm, I'm sure there's uh, some sort of a, a conflict of, of interest in there somewhere. While my conviction in Bitcoin is deeper than ever, there are a number of things that have changed though. The first is that Bitcoin will humble anyone. I have been one of the loudest and most public proponents of the digital currency for half a decade. It allowed me to amass a large online audience and it opened up opportunities that I could have never dreamed of. It doesn't sound like Bitcoin's humbling anyone. I'm not sure what that expression means. It's been amazing and I am incredibly thankful. But there are two essential rules of the internet. Never believe your own bullshit and never become the main character. A hundred percent. 100% there agree with Pomp. Never believe your own bullshit and uh, never become the main character of your own bullshit. In 2019 of June, with Bitcoin sitting around $12,000, I predicted that the asset would rise to $100,000 within two and a half years. Rather than the 8x or so increase, Bitcoin only went up 6x approximately in that time frame. <laughs> Some people would argue that the difference doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, I was wrong. Now, this is where it really, uh, really gets me. It's a very uh, popular psychologism. So what he does here is basically he creates a conflict of the good with the better. It's very disingenuous to do something like that. So I predicted that it was going to go up 6x and, and it on, uh, 10x and it only went up 6x. So I'm right anyway. But I'm going to pretend that I, I'm so honest with you and so immersed with self-reflection that I'm going to pretend that I consider that a mistake and I'm going to uh, openly admit to that mistake so that you guys think that I'm some sort of a prophet anyway. It was a great reminder that humans can't predict the future and price predictions are a fool's game. <laughs> oh, totally. Price predictions are a fool's game. Bitcoin helped to humble me. As for the main character, this is a lesson that I have learned more recently. The internet is a weird, wild place. You can be a nobody and Very quickly true. become a somebody. But as with everything in life, too much of a good thing can ruin it. When you start to become the main character, you can fool yourself into believing that you know more than you do. People start to see you as the teacher, but that is not who I am. I've always relished the student role. I know nothing oh, this and am is... hungry to learn. <laughs> If you've been listening to what Palm's been doing for the last few years, I mean, you will not believe a single word that he's saying out there. This guy, he's ready to argue. He's ready to move in with his own arguments. He's ready to, uh, uh, you know, really go off a cliff whenever it's uh, it's appropriate for, uh, for an argument, anything to win. I just don't think he's being honest here either. I mean, it is really hard uh, to ask dumb questions and learn when people expect you to have the answers. Hey, but you're on television. You're speaking at conferences. You must have all the answers. Well, I don't. I want to learn. This is a journey that never ends. Now that I would call straight up bullshit on that. You know, as a stage director by education, I'm, I mean, I'm someone who uh, used to put up spectacles in theaters and uh, both professionally and, uh, and as an amateur uh, stage director. I tell you, I mean, every single writer and actor, uh, Adler, Stanislavski, anyone who's ever written anything on stage presence will tell you that 
people get on stage to get attention. People get on stage if they have something to say. Artists are extremely uh, opinionated people and they get on stage because the need for self-expression is so devastating to their inner self that they cannot not do it. They must do it. And uh, Pomp's an artist, absolutely. He's an artist, he's a flamboyant, he has this uh, flamboyant personality going on and he cannot not be a public figure. So when someone like himself takes a stance of being a hero of learning while getting on stage at Bitcoin in Miami or at, uh, Consensus in New York and telling people how things are and what to do about it, that's just extremely The second point of conversation is around identity. I've always preached that you should avoid tying your identity to any company or organization, but rather the most powerful thing is to tie your identity to your own name. Be self-sovereign. But I violated my own advice over the last two years. Laser eyes, hashtag Bitcoin in my Twitter bio, it is all noise. The truth is that it is really hard to be an independent person who thinks critically if your identity is tied to a financial asset. Well, so is it company? Is it a company that you shouldn't be tying your identity to or is, or is it a financial asset? Because these are two different things in my opinion. If you're a spokesperson for a company, there's no way for you not to tie your identity to that company. It's just impossible. If you're into Bitcoin, why not? I mean, if you're a believer, people tie their identity to things they believe in all the time. This is what believing means. That you're believing something to the point that you're ready to sacrifice your identity uh, in order for other to convert other people into your beliefs. So I think this here is also logically unsound. How can you seriously evaluate an asset if you have it in your bio? Are you really willing to change your mind if you receive new information? If your identity is tired to something? Maybe, but it definitely makes it harder. And as I told a friend months ago, it is hard to see with laser eyes on. It's a very cute saying, but uh, I mean, seriously, if you're for years propagating Bitcoin, why not tie your identity to it? And if you receive new information that in reality, it's all bullshit, that's when you get out of it. This is when you sell. This is when you liquidate your position. This is when you tell people, listen, uh, I've been accumulating Bitcoin for years now, but now it's time to sell. And that's the reason why I'm, uh, you know, wiping off those laser eyes and uh, no longer use Bitcoin symbol in my bio. There is nothing wrong with this. I think it's a, it's a bit of an exaggeration. The third here. point is around building. Anyone who has been around the Bitcoin ecosystem for a few years knows that bear markets are the time for building. This is when the real world gets done. And that is exactly what I've been trying to do. My team and I have been building products and services across the various companies that I own and operate. The most public one is Inflection Points Inc. We have built the largest employment business in crypto over the last 18 months, where we have helped more than 1,000 people get a new job. Um, Inflection Inc. is an interesting case in point because uh, as far as I remember, I haven't actually looked it up by but I remember that uh, Pomp was able to raise about $12 million in the, uh, in the uh, Series A to uh, start that company. And for 18 months, he's been developing a glorified uh, employment agency that helped uh, a thousand people find a new job. If a crypto journalist of some sort would be willing to dig deeper into this subject, he, would, he or she would uncover so many interesting details that uh, making them public would make their, would make their career. Um, in the financial uh, in, in the financial space but right now i'm not going to say anything I, I think it's just way too iffy there's an inverse correlation between the amount of time someone spends on that website and actually getting shit done i love larping and doom scrolling as much as anyone uh if you guys know what's larping or doom scrolling please let me know because i have no idea i spend some time on twitter myself because it's uh, this is where i get my uh, most valuable links uh, some newsletters of course and uh, twitter links but if you know what's larping or, or doom scrolling Please let me know. I'd really but appreciate it. Bear markets it. <laughs> aren't the time for that. It is time to build. Tweeting isn't conviction. Building is. And to make sure that I am abundantly clear, my views on Bitcoin haven't changed. I have deeper conviction than ever that a finite asset with a programmatic monetary policy will serve as the single best store of value in a world full of undisciplined monetary and fiscal policy. Uh, so much to unpack there. I'm not going to try to unpacking the statement. I think uh, I think Bitcoin is a horrible store of value. It's not designed to store value. It's designed to uh, transfer value peer to peer online. Uh, at moments like that, I always send people back to the original paper, check that out, read it, memorize it, what Bitcoin was conceived to be. It was never conceived as a speculative item. It was never conceived as a store of value. It was conceived as a peer to peer monetary system for value transfer over the internet something that eliminates the necessity of uh, having a trusted third person in that transaction, period. End of story. If we'd uh, stick to the original point of Bitcoin, I think the world would be way, way better off right now instead of continuing the, instead of hearing about all the BlockFi's and all the Genesis and all the uh, FTX's and so on and so forth. I mean, we've just veered off course so hard that hopefully we'll get a chance to get back on it in the nearest future. Well, this is it for now. Hopefully you got something out of it. I mean, I got a lot out of it. I'm going to uh, listen more to that statement. I'm going to read the actual print. 
underneath it. And uh, I think you guys should too. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.